Welcome to the Eye of Truth. It goes without saying that oxygen is one thing we truly can't be without. We convert the food we eat into energy, and this is all thanks to oxygen. In order to keep living, a human needs around 500 liters of oxygen per day. Now, consider how much oxygen you breathe throughout your life. What if I told you that all of that oxygen is really poison? You'd think I'm crazy. In this video, I cover a theory about oxygen you might find very hard to believe. Oxygen is a poison for humans and serves as chains holding humanity back. As we get older, we continue to age until our lives finally end after only 100 years or so. That's all due to oxygen, or so the theory goes. Why? Let's take a quick look at the history of Earth. For most organisms living on Earth, oxygen is a crucial element. However, from approximately 3.5 billion to 2.4 billion years ago, the Earth contained hardly any oxygen at all. The organisms living on Earth at that time, such as bacteria and microbes, didn't need oxygen. These organisms used carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide to convert the energy contained in light into chemical energy in order to produce the organic material they needed to live. However, beginning around 2.5 billion years ago, something happened that would significantly change the history of the Earth. This was the appearance of blue-green algae. These bacteria are completely different from what came before in that they make use of a process called photosynthesis. That is, it uses light to snatch hydrogen atoms from water molecules and then uses carbon dioxide to synthesize the organic compounds it needs to live. During this process, water robbed of hydrogen atoms will become oxygen. As the population of blue-green algae continues to increase, so does the amount of oxygen in the ocean. The ocean eventually became saturated and oxygen was released into the atmosphere. For the organisms living on the Earth then, this was a major disaster. Why? For them, oxygen was a deadly poison. The organic matter contained in these organisms stopped functioning due to the oxidation reaction caused by oxygen. An enormous amount of methane existed in the Earth's atmosphere at that time, and the introduction of oxygen into the atmosphere significantly reduced the amount of methane. This caused the surface temperature to drop suddenly. This, in turn, wiped out most of the organisms living on Earth. However, some organisms were able to survive in this harsh environment and evolved the ability to use the deadly poison called oxygen to generate energy. These organisms would become our ancestors. This shows that oxygen is not necessarily crucial for life. If blue-green algae had not appeared 2.5 billion years ago, the organisms living on Earth now would probably be breathing carbon dioxide or some other gas. There's an interesting story about a certain boy. He claimed to have been a Martian in his previous life and that only four or five years old already commanded a complex understanding of astronomy. During an interview, the boy stated the following. Martians are different from Earthlings. They breathe carbon dioxide. They don't breathe oxygen, so their cells don't oxidize. So, a Martian will grow until he's 35, but then won't age anymore. That's also why a Martian lives much longer than an Earthling. Whether this boy fabricated his memories of a past life on Mars won't be considered here. However, his comment about people aging and dying relatively early due to oxygen is true. Oxygen is an extremely active element and is very good at oxidizing other substances. A spike rusts. An apple when cut begins to change color. A rubber band falls apart. All of these are due to oxidation. What's more, the process of oxidation continues to run rampant even within our bodies. Within the human body are many oxygen molecules. An oxygen molecule will sometimes lose an electron. When this happens, the oxygen molecule will immediately attempt to snatch a nearby electron. The force it applies is very powerful and it's able to easily snatch an electron from a nearby cell. This damages the cell. A damaged cell will quickly be replaced by a new cell, so this isn't such a big problem. The scary thing is that our DNA can be targeted by oxygen. Damage to DNA over many months and years will cause illness and aging. Why? Think of a cell as a machine, 
and DNA as the design schematic used to reassemble it. If this design schematic is damaged and becomes incomplete, any cells reassembled using it will not function properly, or could even become cancerous. It is therefore no exaggeration that oxygen causes aging. If what the Martian boy said is true, and his people were able to breathe carbon dioxide, they would probably have longer lifespans than us oxygen breathers. Let's go back to the ancient history of Earth. Common sense dictates that there was very little oxygen on the surface back then. However, blue-green algae suddenly appeared 2.5 billion years ago and changed everything. The life that originally existed on this planet around a billion years before blue-green algae was completely wiped out over a short period of time due to the appearance of blue-green algae. Subsequent life would use oxygen to live. It seems strange. This process seemed like it might even have been carefully designed. I don't know who did it, but their purpose is clear. That purpose is to wrap us in chains. By this I mean chains on the development of civilization. We breathe oxygen and therefore live for 100 years or so. During the initial development of civilization, this wasn't much of a problem. Discovering technologies related to agriculture and passing them on to future generations didn't require a long lifespan. This is true even for modern mathematics and physics. A single person was capable of establishing a brand new field of study. Isaac Newton created the discipline of physics, while Albert Einstein came up with the theory of relativity and established modern physics. Still, our short lifespans posed few restrictions on the development of civilization. However, with science and technology having now grown more advanced, this has all changed. In the modern age, it is nearly impossible for a single person to come up with a major theory. Since entering the 21st century, science and technology have seemed to develop at an astounding pace. Computer performance continues to advance. These amazing things called smartphones were invented. However, let's really think about this. These are merely applications of theories discovered the previous century. In actuality, Science and technology have seen only partial development over the last 50 years. Technology has improved, but science, the theory behind technology, has hardly advanced at all. Why? Discovering new theories has become much more difficult. In order to discover something new, we first need to understand theories that have already been established. In this age of highly advanced science, it can take around 30 years simply to understand these theories. However, the human brain operates at peak performance while we are in our 20s. Most of our major discoveries were made by scientists in their 20s. Modern scientists who begin seeking new discoveries in their 30s are at a disadvantage in that their mental capabilities have begun to drop. They will have trouble achieving anything groundbreaking. In other words, we breathe oxygen and so our lifespan is short, and that means that our mental capabilities peak very early on. Because of this, making scientific progress will become more and more difficult. This is why I describe oxygen as chains on humanity. Although it might seem like I'm overstating things, some people are already aware of this problem and are attempting to solve it. Elon Musk is famous for his work at Tesla and SpaceX. However, he's also heavily involved in something intriguing. He's co-founded a company called Neuralink that's developing what are called brain-machine interfaces. Currently, the goal of this research is to analyze electrical signals in the brain in order to read thoughts and to ultimately connect human thought directly to machines. The final goal here seems to be to free human thought from the physical body and upload consciousness into a machine so the humans can exist independent of their rapidly aging and dying brains. Recently, Elon Musk stated that he had already uploaded his own brain to the cloud and had chatted with his own consciousness. Of course, uploading consciousness is still in its early stages. However, in order for humanity to throw off its chains, the type of work being done now by Elon Musk is likely the only chance we've got. Back to oxygen. The father of toxicology, Paracelsus, once said the following, All things are poison and not without poison. Only the dose makes a thing not poison. For humans, Oxygen can be a poison or not, depending on the dose. However, 
If what the Martian boy said is true, and there is a race of people who breathe a gas less damaging than oxygen, then we can conclude that oxygen is definitely a poison for us. Thank you for watching.